Hi, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we're gardening here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. And today, I'm planting my bulbs. Really, that's, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Really. Okay, fine, come along with me and I will explain. Okay, so here's the deal. I bought a lot of bulbs and I showed them to you in my bulb order video that I did a couple of, oh, it was probably last week sometime. And so now I have to figure out where they're all going and which ones are going into containers, which ones are going in the ground and in which locations. And so I can't remember what I had planned. So I had to come back to my notes that I took and look and see what I have and make a plan. So that's what the computer's for. Okay, so I'm looking at my list and I have 100 winter aconite for early spring, very early spring. But those bulbs are over a year old and I'm not sure they're gonna work, so I'm not counting on those at all. Then I have 75 hyacinths and 50 white daffodils for early spring. Then in mid-spring I have 20 golden echo daffodils, 20 foxtrot double tulips, 50 snowflakes, and 50 yellow trumpet daffodils. Then for late spring I have allium, allium, and double dark purple blue diamond uh, tulips. And then later for summer I have hardy glads and the lilies. So, oh, and then I also have the Christophei alliums, which are probably late spring also. All right, so which ones are going in the containers? That's my first question. What I'd like to do is do a bulb layered container. So uh, some on the bottom, some in the middle, maybe some on the top as well, and then top them off with those leftover white pansies that I have. Uh, for something to look at throughout the winter. So I got to figure out which ones are good candidates for layering. And I think the way you do it normally is you put the... I think you put the earliest ones in first. Okay, so you put the bulbs in the bottom that are the latest and the largest. And then the next layer are earlier and smaller. And then if you do a third layer, those are the smallest and the very earliest. So for example, you might put a late tulip in the bottom, a mid-season daffodil in the center, and then on top put some, I don't know, grape hyacinths or crocus or something like that. So that's kind of the concept there. All right, I kind of need to do a visual inspection and see what I got. Oh, crocus, I forgot I bought crocus, yay. All right, so I think I'm gonna put together some containers and I might put together two different kinds of containers. I'm not sure yet, but for sure, I'm going to do, uh, nothing is for sure. That's the lesson here. All right, let me get these out of the way. Okay, I'm definitely putting some hyacinths into some containers. Those are mid season. And so I want something a little bit earlier and a little bit later maybe to go with them. So hyacinths, this is a mix of pastels and I don't know which colors are which. So I need to make sure that I'm planting something in here that can mix with any of the colors. So on the other hand, maybe I'm putting them with plants that flower at different seasons and so they won't even be blooming at the same time. But even still, I think I'm gonna put a couple of hyacinths in a container with some of these Mount Hood white with yellow that fade to white daffodils. And that way, if they do happen to bloom at the same time as each other, they will color blend. Huh, look at that, color blend. All right, and then maybe I'll top them with some crocus. So the first season would be the crocus and then the hyacinth and then the daffodil. That's a good idea. If I do say so myself. All right, now I need some containers. You guys remember these pots? I bought them in Minnesota at, uh, where were we? What was the name of that garden center? I don't remember. I brought these pots home from Minnesota. I have two of them. One of them used to have a plant in it. I just took that plant out. The other one hasn't been used yet, so they're slightly different colors from each other. All right, so I'm gonna put some potting soil in here. I'm just using potting mix, bagged potting mix from Lowe's. All right, so I put about, um, about up to here. Just enough 
to be the base of the roots of the first layer of bolts. Okay, so the first layer that I'm going to do is going to be the Mount Hood Daffodil. These are the latest flowering of all the three things. All right, so this is what a daffodil bulb looks like. It looks kind of like an onion. Um, it's got a pointy top. That's where the leaves come out, and that goes up to the top of the pot. And then it has a root ball down at the bottom. And so when you're placing them, you just put them in the soil like that, let the roots get in there, and um, just sit them straight up. I'm just gonna put them about an inch apart in this pot and see how many they fit. And look, here's a nice size double one. This shows that they uh, do naturalize, they get bigger over the seasons, and so this might actually put out two flower stalks. Okay, so I was able to get five in a ring and one in the center, so a total of six bulbs in the bottom. Now I'm going to cover those up with soil and get ready for the next layer. Kind of firm that down. You don't want too many air pockets around them. All right, now I am ready to put in my hyacinth bulbs. These will bloom a little bit earlier than the daffodils. Again, I don't know what color these are, so I'm going to put five in here. I don't think we need more than five because they get nice big pom-poms on them. So I'm just going to put five around here. So I'm going to try to put them in between the daffodils that I can still see in the bottom layer. There we go. I'm not going to put one in the center this time. I don't know what color these are going to be, so we'll have to see when they come up. Now I'm going to cover that up with soil. Okay, now normally if all you were doing was bulbs in your container, then the next layer of bulb would go here and then soil on top of that and you would be done. But what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to use up some of my extra pansies and put them in here as a top layer. And then I'm going to put the crocus bulbs down in between the pansies after I have planted the pansies. So this might be a little bit of a trick to get these pansies in around the, uh, the bulbs that I just put in, but I'm pretty sure I'd be able to do it, especially if I concentrate them in the center. I have these pansies left over from another project that I did recently, and um, they're pretty leggy. They're just plain white. Some of them have a little bit of pink color, not pink, a little bit of purple color coming through on them, but that'll be that'll be perfectly fine. All right, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by putting four, and I'm gonna kind of concentrate them in the center of this soil because I know that the hyacinth bulbs are around the outside. If these pansies do well, they will fill out over the course of the winter, um, especially in the spring, they'll fill out and be bushy. And then won't it be pretty to have all these bulbs popping up through these pansies? At least in my mind, it's pretty. We'll see if it really happens that way in practice. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit more soil here before I, well, actually, no, I'm gonna, what am I gonna do? The crocus bulbs are next. This is a variety of uh, white, purple, and yellow. These bulbs are a lot smaller, and it can be hard to see where the top and bottom is, but um, maybe you can see. This is the point coming up out, and that's the top, and then here's the root, and that's the bottom. So you put them pointy side up, and you just set them in there. And I'm gonna actually put quite a few in here because they're so pretty. All right, looks like I ended up putting 16 of them in there. I'm just nestling down in the soil. These don't need to be covered up very much. The general rule of thumb is that a bulb needs to go down, the bottom of the bulb needs to be twice as deep as the height of the bulb. So in your soil, the bottom of the bulb's here, your bulb's this high, and needs that much more room on top of it. So I only need a half inch on top of the, uh, these purposes. Okay, so this is finished. I've got daffodils on the bottom then hyacinth and then crocus and a little fluffy top of white pansies. I'm going to um, probably not water this anymore because it's already got pretty moist soil in there and I don't want my bulbs to rot. I'm going to set this outside all winter long. I'm going to put it in a location where it gets pretty full sun and then I'm probably going to have to protect it from squirrels so I might invest in some of those wire cloches from Gardener Supply or uh, in the meantime, I'll maybe wrap it up in some sort of mesh or something. Just to keep the squirrels out of it, I do have squirrels who come by and dig in all my pots.
75 hyacinth bulbs is a lot for me. I don't usually plant bulbs on that large of a scale. So I've put some into those other two containers in the layered pots. And now I'm gonna put some into this container for forcing in this container in the spring. Now to force hyacinth bulbs, you wanna buy them in the fall and then you need to chill them for 13 weeks. So that's like three months. So if here we are in mid-November, so mid-December, mid-January, mid-February, these will be ready to be coming out of the chilling conditions and start to force inside. And they should bloom in a couple of weeks, maybe three or four weeks. I'm not exactly sure how long they take to bloom after you pull them out of the chiller. But um, anyway, so mid-February and beyond, I'll be able to grow these hyacinths. Now, you can chill them either like this in a bag or you can pot them up into soil and chill the whole container. I'm going to do that on this container, but then I'm also going to chill a few bulbs just on their own outside the containers because there's another way to force them and that is take them out of the chilled environment and then just set them in a hyacinth bulb forcing um, vase, which basically means you put the very bottom of it, the roots just touching water, and then that will force them to grow in that water, just like paper whites or amaryllis at the holiday season. Hyacinths are great for that in the spring. So I'm going to pot some of these up and chill this whole thing, and then I'm going to chill some more just as bulbs. Now to chill them, I'm going to put, they want to be about um, between 35 and 48 degrees Fahrenheit and I'll try to remember to put the Celsius equivalent up on the screen and for me that means in a refrigerator um, so I'm going to actually store both the bare bulbs and the potted up ones in my spare refrigerator that we have in the basement where we keep drinks and holiday foods when we run out of room upstairs now you should not store some types of vegetables with the bulbs um, because they will negatively react with each other in the refrigerator. So I think it's apples and onions. I'm not sure. I'll look that up and put that on the screen as well. So um, because it's in my second fridge, I don't have to worry about that problem. So I'm just going to put some soil in the bottom of the pot and then put in as many as I can jam in there in the soil and then cover them up with soil and they'll be ready to go into the refrigerator for 13 weeks. I usually just use a piece of paper towel and I fold it up to cover up that hole down there. Um, you could also use a coffee filter um, or a paper napkin. I've also, in the past, I've used just a little small square of a rag of fabric that I have. You could also put a piece of broken pottery across there. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can cover up the hole so that it lets water through but doesn't let your soil out. And by the time this four layers of paper towel has disintegrated, it'll be time to pull these bulbs out of the fridge and put them outside anyway. Right, so I was able to get 10 high sense bulbs into this shallow container. All right, this is not a Thanksgiving dish. Don't let it get confused with your favorite cranberries or mashed potatoes. All right, take out in mid-February. Let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five in there. Let me put five more. All right, so there's 10 hyacinth bulbs going into the fridge just on their own. I'm just putting them in this paper sack so that I can uh, more easily identify them. There we go. I'll take these out in mid-February and then I will be able to force them for beauty inside. I decided to put a whole bunch of those white Mount Hood daffodils into a window box container. There's probably 30 of them in there. I didn't remember to count. And then I just topped these off with the rest of the white pansies that I had. And I think it's going to make a nice container to have throughout the winter season, but then in the spring also. It should be a really stunning display. Okay, I've decided to put some of my daffodils in this container as well. 
across the front. I finished up with my mount hood. I think there's five here, five there, three there, and three here, so 16 total. And then a clump here of five king out, no, Dutch masters, five Dutch masters, and five Dutch masters there. And so let me just get these dug in. They need to go about down about six inches. And so this soil is really easy to dig in. So I'm just gonna use my tall, thin trowel, get myself a nice deep hole and just stick them down in there. Friends, I want to pause here real quick in the middle of my bulb planting to share with you an idea that I got from some of you. Has it happened to you where you forget where you planted your bulbs? You guys came through with some suggestions for me. You said use golf tees to mark where you plant your bulbs. Oh, genius! And if you want to bump up this uh, suggestion, here's another idea. Glue some glass gems to the top of your bulbs and then they're just a tad bit more decorative when you see them laying out in your garden. I got these probably at the craft store years and years and years ago and I've been using them forever. And then I also used some of these green ball marbles that I got at the Dollar Tree. Glue that I'm using is this E6000 glue which um, it will stand up to all sorts of things. This is for glass and metal and so forth. And you don't want to use hot glue because hot glue will melt in the sun and they'll fall off. I've had that happen before. So yeah, I've got enough um, of these that I can make a whole bunch more of this project and I'll never lose my bulbs in the garden again. Well, never is a long time. Definitely gonna be putting some daffodils out here on this front flower beds right at the end of our front walk. What a great way to greet and add uh, cheerfulness to any, any visitors that you have along your front walk. I'm gonna be putting um, on each side, so two of each of these, 10 of the Golden Echo daffodils. Those are 16 inches tall and they have white petals with yellow cups, I believe, and they're mid-spring. And then I'm also gonna be putting 20 of the Dutch Master, which are the big tall trumpet lily, not trumpet lily, big tall trumpet daffodils that naturalize from year to year. So that's definitely going in here on each side. And I might pop in some of those hyacinths as well. And who knows, maybe some of those crocus? I don't know. And should some snowflakes go in here? Not sure. Anyway, I'm going to be putting into the ground some bone meal with each of these bulbs. Now, flower bulbs, in that bulb is actually all of the energy that they need to put on their beautiful show for next year. But adding some bone meal to the soil will actually help them establish a wonderfully strong root system into the soil. And that way, those bulbs which are naturally prone to clumping up and making a big uh, naturalized clump, they will just get off to a great start with their root development so that that just kicks them for naturalizing next year and beyond. Okay, I've got my uh, bulb markers and all my tools. I'm ready to go. The golden echo daffodils are actually pretty small as compared to some of the other varieties. Um, so I think I'm just going to be able to use my long skinny trowel. These need to go about six inches into the ground and I think I'm going to be able to just pop them in. I have 10 each, so I think I'm gonna do two sets of three and one set of four. These are Millennium Allium, and they will return next year. So I'm gonna put um, a group of four right in here. Now I'm gonna mark so that I don't forget what I've done. And these are the Golden Echo, which are white with yellow, so I'm gonna use a white marker. And this will help me remember when I come back and put other things in this garden, that this is what I have here. And I'm gonna put them all the way down so all that's showing is that marble.
Now, these Dutch Master bulbs, they're much bigger than the Golden Echoes. And so I'm not gonna be able to use that method that I just used with the trowel to get these in the ground deeply enough. So I'm gonna actually use my shovel. I'm gonna dig a hole that's big enough to put five of these in. And then I will uh, put all five in the hole and then um, cover them back up. Now, if you have a big uh, auger, you can use a big auger for this job. Uh, Laura from Garden Answer just finished doing a bunch of um, nine inch auger holes where she put five or six bulbs in each one. I don't have a big auger, I don't need a big auger, I'm just going to use my shovel. Alright, if you've been wondering how my no dig bed is working, let me give you a look in the hole. Pretty darn good. Sorry for the shadows. I've hit a tree root down there. Um, but the soil is pretty good and I haven't had much of any grass trying to root up out of here. That's good. Now these are supposed to be six inches deep and I don't know if this is gonna end up being exactly six inches or approximate or whatever, but it's all good. In the end, these actually naturalize and they grow so thickly that they end up having to be divided just naturally. So if they end up to tight together to start, it's all good. Well, my camera skills failed me once again. I thought I was capturing all of the work that I was doing here, but clearly not. So i just let you know, I dug three more holes and in each of those holes I put in five of the Dutch Master yellow trumpet daffodils for a total of four holes and 20 daffodils all together. Okay, so I got two kinds of daffodils planted in this bed over here, and now I'm just gonna repeat the process over here. For these hyacinth bulbs, I use another method of planting, and that is I use an auger with a drill. Now, uh, this is a three inch diameter, 12 inch long auger. These bulbs only need to be planted five inches deep. So I just went around and I, um, I dug 16 holes with my auger and I tried to put them in between where I had planted violas and pansies earlier in the season. Although the violas and pansies have been eaten by deer and rabbits, so I'm not sure they're going to make it through the winter, but, uh, and then I planted, I dug all the holes, I put some bone meal in each hole, I put the bulb down in and covered it up and marked it with a golf tee. So um, now I'm going to do that on the other side of the same area. nine more of these left so I'm gonna put five on one side and four on the other out here toward the street. And it's a new day. I am back out. It's morning. I'm gonna be working out here in the front yard where we're in the shade because of the house and the sun is coming up. And oh my gosh, look at the gorgeous leaves back there. 
Ah, I just love fall color. And we've got some maples along our south side hill over there that just glow all day long with their orange and yellow and a little bit of red colors. It's so pretty. Anyway, we're here now. We're going to be finishing up our bulb planting today with any good luck. I have alliums left, snowflakes, tulips, and crocus, and lilies, and glads. Oh, there's a lot more than I thought. Okay, but we're gonna just hop to it. Let's talk about the alliums. I have two packs of four Christophii allium, and these, uh, let's see, they grow to be 16 to 20 inches tall, and they wanna be planted eight inches deep. I have nine Schubertii alliums, and they grow to be 16 to 18 inches tall, and they wanna be planted six inches deep. So eight inches deep, six inches deep. And then I have 25 purple sensation allium, and they grow to be 28 to 32 inches tall, and they wanna be planted five inches deep. So it's odd to me that these are five, these are six, and these are eight, but these are the tallest, these are the next tallest, and these are the shortest. Well, these are about the same, same height. So that's what I have. And I've been thinking about where I wanna put them, and I'm coming out here so I can look at the front of the house um, all at once. I think I kind of want to have lollipops of purple right over in here and right over in here. So I'm thinking I'm going to take eight of the purple sensation and put them in here. I'll take eight of them and put them in there. And then I'll put the other nine that I have in the backyard. And then I'm going to mix in probably three of the Schubertii over here and three of the Schubertii over here, and the other three in the backyard. And then I'll probably go ahead and put all four of the Christophii in here and four Christophii in here as well. So it'll be a mix, three different kinds. They may bloom at the same time, they may bloom at different times, um, but I'm just gonna kind of mix them together so we have three different kinds of purple lollipop blooms happening next spring. Um, I currently don't have any other spring bulbs in these beds. And so I think starting out this year with just the allium, uh, nothing else. And, uh, oh, actually, no, I just planted these uh, hyacinths right here. But as far as back in there, there's no daffodils, there's no snowflakes, there's no tulips, nothing. So I think starting with just the allium there and the allium here is going to be a nice start to um, an annual adding to the bulbs. I can envision in the future all the way around here we'll put a lot of spring flowering things in there but right now as we're just preparing these beds I don't want to get in the middle of that. So I think that's going to be my plan and I am going to use my auger with my drill to drill the holes. Um, these say they want to go eight inches deep, but I think I'm just going to aim for six inches for everything. It'll be easier that way. And then I can just do a mix of things. As far as specific placement, I think I'm going to concentrate kind of over here in between these, uh, perennials and shrubs. I might stick some back in here, which you'll be able to see from the front porch, but because of the, uh, false cypress often, uh, from from the sidewalk if I put too many in here you won't be able to see them from the sidewalk but you'll be able to see them as you walk up the front walk and certainly as you get on to the front porch so eight purple sensation three Schubertii and four Christophii on each side so eight plus seven is 15 bulbs on each side so I need to plant 15 holes All right, so I have 15 holes planted, not planted, dug. And now I'm gonna put in my three Schubertii, spread them out. Then my four Christophii, spread those out. And then the rest of the holes will get purple sensation. And that's how I'm going to kind of, sort of randomly, but not really randomly, spread out my bulbs. I'm gonna put bone meal in each hole, but I'm gonna put bone meal in the three Schubertii holes first, and then put the bulbs in, and then cover them up, and then mark them, and then the bone meal for the four, put the bulbs in, cover them up, mark them, and then the bone meal for the eight. And that is how I'm gonna keep track of what I have going on where so that I don't lose my mind. For the record, I'm putting in the yellow with the white marbles for Schubertii. That's my record, I'm sticking to it.
Christ whoops, Christophei blue markers. And the remaining holes are for the purple sensation. And so bone meal first, then the bulbs, then the markers. For the purple sensation, I'm going to be using orange with white tops because that's the only thing I have 16 of. In fact, I only have 15 of them. Oh well. Okay, so this side is done. I'm going to do the same process to this side. Okay, so that's all the alliums planted in the front. Uh, I still have nine of the Purple Sensation and three of the Schubertii Allium that I can put in the backyard somewhere. I need to go back there and find spots for those. So all I have left now are two kinds of tulips, the snowflakes, crocus, glads, lilies. I think that's it. While I'm out here in the front yard, I think I am going to go ahead and plant the lily trees that I bought. This is a lily tree that I got four, maybe five years ago. I can't exactly remember. But this was, um, I believe, three, one, two, three bulbs uh, four or five years ago. And now it's this huge clump. The lilies grow to be about this tall. Of course, I've trimmed them back after they finish blooming. Um, and they stay in this beautiful kind of large, interesting texture foliage. They are taking on a little bit of fall color in some places. So this is a beautiful plant to have in your garden. And I bought some more of these bulbs, a different variety. These bloom white with pink, and I think I got ones that bloom white with yellow. But I'm gonna be putting them on the south side to kind of mimic the fact that we have this big lily stand here, and we'll have another one over there. Now this is only three bulbs, but I'm gonna be planting four bulbs over there. And then I still have four more because I didn't realize that, anyway, I ended up with four extras. So I'm probably gonna give two of those away and then put two of them somewhere else. Or maybe I'll put three up here, three somewhere else and give two away. Maybe I'll give four away. I'm not sure. I have a friend who wanted some. So uh, yeah, so let's get these lily bulbs into the ground over there. These lily bulbs came from Brex.com. Uh, these are the Belcastro variety. Um, and they look very different from a tulip or a daffodil bulb. They look a little bit like garlic, I think, because they have these separations here. And they also kind of look like an artichoke, I think. Um, or a little rosette of a succulent. So they are very different from daffodils or tulips or crocus or any of those others that we've been dealing with. Um, and so the way you plant these, of course, obviously these are the roots. So you're gonna dig your hole ni nice and round, big and round. Uh, this is probably three feet, three feet. That would be a huge lily bulb, wouldn't it? Three feet. This is three inches in diameter. So you need a three inch hole at least. My auger is three inches. And then these particular ones want to be planted six inches deep. Um, so then you uh, fix your hole up, put in your um, amendments if you're gonna, I'm gonna use bone meal again. Uh, and then you just put this down in there and you plant it just like a tulip or a daffodil. Uh, but it, it just looks really interesting, I think, don't you think? All right, where am I gonna put them? I have, I'm gonna put three of these out here just so that I can kind of mimic the massing of the size of what happened over there. Okay, so wherever I put them, I have to be prepared for a stand of them that are about uh, three to four feet in diameter. I'd say that's what that gets over there. And they'll get, eventually they'll get to be this tall. Although in the first year, they'll probably only be three feet, maybe four feet. Each year they'll multiply and have more stalks and they will get taller. Um, It'd be kind of nice to cover up that big white spot on the wall there. So, kind of here-ish, except I just put that there. Okay, this peony, I'm going to move it because I want these lilies right here. So that's what I'm going to do. This is a tree peony. No, it's not. I forget what kind of peony it is. I had it in the side yard. It didn't thrive over there. So I put it out here. It didn't thrive here either. Although I do see that it did put on some roots, so that's good. But I'm going to move it probably right over there. How about right there? That seems like a good spot for a peony, don't you think? If that smoke bush overtakes it, we'll deal with that then. I haven't used green yet, have I? Maybe I used green out there. I don't remember. 
Anyway, here, green is going to indicate these lilies. Those markers kind of disappeared. All right, let me get this peony into the ground over there. Now, peonies don't like to have their roots disturbed. Oh, well. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, peonies also don't want to be planted too deep. And actually, I can see the eyes coming up for next spring. So I'm going to plant those so that they don't get buried. All right, I think I have all the bulbs in the front yard that I'm planning to put in the front yard. Although, I'm no, that's not true. We'll be back to the front yard, but let's go around back. So I want to plant my tulips. These are the double tulips. Some of them are foxtrot and some of them are, I think, blue diamond. I want to plant them on either side of this arbor. I think it'll be really pretty in the spring to have pink and dark, dark purple uh, tulips here. But first I have to get the annuals out and clean up the perennials for the fall season. So that's job number one. The annuals that I have in here are purple queen or purple heart. I'm not sure which it is. I've heard people call it both things. And then there's some um, chartreuse alternanthera in there. There's some columnar basil and then there's some kufia and then uh, those are the annuals that are going to come out and then I'm going to trim back the perennials and uh, just tidy things up so that I can see what I'm doing before I put the bulbs in. Boy those uh, purple queens they're in there I'm going to need to get my shovel to get the root balls out. Uh, yeah let me do that. That is incredible. Holy cow. Phew. I won't be surprised if I get some returning next year. These are related to spiderwort, which grow native in Maryland. They're in the same Tratiscantia family. And I don't know if these are hardy here, but somebody commented on one of my videos earlier in the season that in, they, in their house, seven, Zone 7, uh, that these do come back. And so, I won't be surprised if a little bit of root got left underground and they'll return next year. If that happens, we'll see. I don't know if I'm gonna want them in this location next year, but you know, I can always move a volunteer around to somewhere else too. These basil were really great. I didn't expect them to get this big and they were really tall and columnar and um, they were gorgeous all season long. I, I never used them for eating. I always just used them for ornamental greenery in the garden and they were great for that but they smell wonderful and I imagine they taste good too. This kufia performed pretty well. These were a late addition to my annual garden and they're still going strong. I probably could have left them in for some um, pretty foliage. You can see that they are green with pretty pink and red coloration on them. Uh, but as, I'm, as long as I'm cleaning up here and getting ready for my bulbs, I might as well just do it so I don't have to come back and do it again in another couple of weeks. This is a huge Walker's Low Nepeta that I'm going to be cutting back to just a couple of inches and it will reflush again next spring and it'll be gorgeous. But right now I'm just going to clean it up. This is mini pearl phlox that I dug and divided a couple of weeks ago. There's two little stands there. And then there's this plant that I got at Clarence and I don't know exactly know what it is. Some sort of salvia. I don't know exactly which one though, uh, but I'm probably going to leave it there. So this side is pretty well cleaned out of all the annuals and cutting back the perennials that I'm going to be doing now. And so it's ready to receive tulip bulbs. Now I'm just going to do the same thing over here. All right, well, I've got a big bag full of green waste material from this garden. I'm going to be putting that out on the front garden in my lasagna style no dig garden beds that I'm preparing over the winter. And so let me go dump that out there and then I'll grab my bulbs and my auger, etc. The things for planting in here. All right, so I'm gonna be planting these blue diamond double tulips, which are dark purple violet color. And I'm going to be planting these foxtrot doubles, which are light pink. Um, tulip bulbs are smaller than daffodils usually, at least smaller than the regular big Dutch master daffodils. Um, and these uh, say on the package that they need to be dug in four inches deep, which is not terribly deep. So I'm just gonna use my auger and I'm probably just gonna scatter these around in here, kind of, I don't know if I'll do clumps of them or if I'll just do them like in a large mass, kind of a few inches apart from each other. I don't know, I'm gonna let, let mother nature tell me what to do. I don't 
don't know how many I just dug. I don't know. Let's just get these bulbs in here. I'm just going to mix them up and put them in the holes that I think I dug. Should I mark them? Or should I just let them go? I'm not planting anything else in here until after they bloom, so I'm not going to bother marking them. I'm just going to mix the two kinds of bulbs together, put them in the ground, call it good. That's done. Um, now, you might think, Jenny, you planted some of those tulips pretty close to some of the other things you have in here, like my boxwood and my hydrangea and some of the perennials. And the thing is, tulips here in my area were just slightly too warm for them to really come back and um, naturalize very well. Uh, so tulips here, I typically treat them like annuals. Um, now some kinds of tulips are better at returning beautifully than other kinds of tulips. Um, I think these doubles are gonna be kind of a one and done situation. So um, I'm not anticipating these actually blooming the second year. Uh, I will leave them in the ground, and if they do come back a second year, then yay, that'll be a happy surprise, but I'm not expecting a great show on the second year, so um, the fact that they're pretty close to some other plants, not a huge deal, because in my garden, like always, if I don't like where it is or if they grow too close together, move it. I think I told you these bulbs are smaller, but I didn't show you, did I? So here's a tulip bulb. It's smaller than a daffodil, it's smoother, and it's a little bit more squatty shaped. And if you turn it upside down, it's a little more heart shaped. And you can see the root end and the pointy end is where the stem will come up. You know what though? If you put a bulb in the ground, just any old way, just drop it in and cover it up, it will find a way, it will bloom. Nature is amazing. Done. Okay, next on the agenda, I have 50 of these snowflakes, which are, uh, the foliage is really similar to daffodils, and the flowers are really similar to huge snowdrops. And so they are white, they have little green spots on them, but they're white bells that are along a long stalk, kind of like lily of the valley, kind of like um, the shape of a snowdrop, uh, but on daffodil type stems. So it's kind of a weird, um, odd plant, all things considered, but the bulbs look a lot like daffodil bulbs, although they do have these like extra little sprouty thingies. So anyway, I have 50 of these and I thought it might be fun to put some into a container um, and then put the rest into the ground in clumps of five or six. So I'm going to take out these caladium bulbs, see if I want to store them over the winter. Uh, and then in these containers, I'm going to put these snowflake things. Uh, I'm in that stage of um, fall planting where everything is a mess. We haven't got all the leaves cleaned up. I've got stuff everywhere. The porch is a complete and total mess. But in a day or two, it'll all be good. Because that's what I tell myself and my husband. Okay, where's my trowel? There we go. Caladiums coming out. I don't know if I'm going to save these over the winter. I've never done that before. I understand it's similar to saving dahlias. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. So this is what that caladium bulb looks like after I took it out of the soil. So this is a green and white one. This pot's green and white, and then this one was a pink and green. And I don't remember the names of them, sorry, or I would tell you. So it looks like they've multiplied since I planted them in there. Got these little side shoot babies. Like I said, I've never stored caladiums over the winter before. I might try these. I don't know yet how to do them. I haven't researched it, but I'm guessing that you knock the dirt off of them, get them dried out just a little bit, and then store them in a cool, dark location over the winter, cut off the stems and stuff. That's my guess if I had to guess on it, but I'll do some research and see if that's actually how you do it. All right, um, so these snowflake bulbs, uh, they need to be planted six inches deep. And so that's roughly what I've got going on here. I think when you're using containers, you can fudge it a little bit on the depth, I think. Let's count, one, two. I'm just gonna cram these in here just like they were daffodils. 
I'm going to put 10 in each of these containers. And they're not exactly in a circle or in lines. They're just kind of down in there. I'm going to add a little bit of bone meal to this container soil. I didn't do this on my other containers. I don't know why I'm doing it here. I just am. Who knows? I don't know. At this point, I'm just trying to get things done. You know what I mean? All right, and then I'm just going to take this soil and reuse it and put it back in here on top. I've got some leaves mixed in there. It's all good. Tell you what, that stuff does not smell good. It's not as bad as Biotone. All right, what did I say? Ten? Ten per bucket, I think. That's what I did on the other one. There's one. So that's two containers of um, snowflakes, 10 each. So that leaves me five more in this bag plus another bag of 25. So I have 30 left. So I'd be able to make six clumps of five out in the garden. So out here, I'm behind the arbor um, near the rose um, obelisk and close to the back fence. And I thought it might be fun to put some of these snowflakes back in this area along this winding path. I don't think we have any daffodils in here. So I'm gonna do clumps of five snowflake bulbs per hole and I'm gonna just kind of scatter them back in here as kind of a just I don't know here and there okay so I have three clumps of gara and I have three clumps of nepeta both of those plants grow pretty big and they intermingle with each other during the growing season but in the spring, when the snowflakes are coming out, they'll both be just getting started. There will be plenty of room for me to put a clump of snowflakes right here in amongst here. Um, and then when the snowflakes are done, their leaves will start turning yellow and dying down while the other plants take over. And I think it'll be a nice combination to have one overtake the other in the course of the spring and early summer. Okay, so that is six clumps of five snowflakes each for a total of 30 plus the 20 that are in the containers for a total of 50. Now, I'm gonna put the containers probably on the driveway, which gets full sun in the winter. And then as they start to sprout and bloom in the spring, I'll arrange them somewhere else in the garden, probably on the front corners of the stage. But we'll see next spring how it goes and what I feel like. Okay, please ignore all of the leaves which have yet to be cleaned up for the season. But I thought that the allium might look really nice here, planted amongst the hostas. I'm going to use my auger and I'm going to put in 12 holes here and get these uh, remaining alliums into the ground. Okay, alliums are all done. Yay! One thing I don't think I've mentioned yet, I'm going to be adding this Repelzol by Bonide. Um, these are granules, and this is a repellent for many, many types of animals in the garden. There's the pictures of all the things that it claims to repel, including squirrels. And right here where I've put the hyacinths in amongst the pansies and violas, this will have the added benefit that maybe it'll keep the deer and rabbits off of the pansies and violas for a little while. One can hope anyway. Nothing like the smell of rotten eggs, garlic, and cloves all mixed together to brighten up your afternoon. I've selected this location for three more of the lily tree bulbs. They're going to go up against the fence in the area roughly where I had my tomatoes this past summer. Um, it doesn't get a ton of sun, but it gets a little bit of sun. It gets enough sun to kind of grow tomatoes. So I'm not sure how these lilies will do here. But the thing is, I don't have a ton of full sunspots, so this is the best I can do right here. I would like to have a little bit of height here, and I think that that'll be a nice way to get that started. So, uh, all right, and I think the rest of the lilies I'm gonna give to my friend. And so that leaves me crocuses and hardy glads. So the hardy glads, there's 12 of them. They only get to be two feet tall. They're not the big tall ones. So I'm thinking I'm gonna actually put them in this flower bed here over by the um what do i have there i don't remember i'm tired 
Okay, these are the Cherry Blossom Hardy Gladiolus Mix, and there are 12 of them, and they're in shades of pink and white. Um, and they only grow to be 20 to 24 inches tall. Um, and so that says to plant them four inches deep, four to six inches apart. I'm probably gonna use the trench method and just make a big four inch hole and put all 12 of them in there. And then I'll just have a nice patch of these from the get go. These flower in early to mid summer. So I'm guessing late May to 4th of July or so around in the June time frame. So I think I'm gonna just put them in a nice patch kind of uh, where I had dahlias last year, like right around in here. This is the liriope that I dug out and had sitting bare root, no soil on it for a month in June this year. And look, it's doing fine. So liriope is a really, really tough plant. You can totally mistreat it, although you shouldn't, but you can and it'll still live. All right, again, for record purposes, I'm just gonna use these plain red golf tees and make a circle. And the inside the circle is where the hardy glads are, if I can remember by the time I get over there. All right, and that is in the, definitely in the good enough category. Let me get pop these liriope into the ground. I'm just gonna stick them over here. Next spring, maybe I'll move them somewhere else. All right, that is by no means a final location for that liriope, but good enough for now. I'll move it in the spring. Okay, all I have left are these 60 crocus plus however many are left from the package that I opened and used some out of, I don't remember. So let's go. All right, I'm gonna very roughly break up the soil here um, with my shovel, just to make sure that I'll be able to push the bulbs in with my hands. Um, I do have a layer of chopped leaves here already. I need to water that in. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna prepare this soil this way. Continue that and, and get this soil prepared. And then I'm just gonna toss these in and cover them up. All right. Um, bone meal. these in mainly because I need to water in the dry leaves that are on here that hadn't been watered in yet um, and then I'm going to put some of that repels all across here too so that in case these aren't very deeply buried which I know they're not very deeply buried um, hopefully the squirrels will stay off of them if I put the repellent down so water and then repels all Woo, look at that And that, my friends, is the last of my bulb planting for the fall of 2021. I've got all my bulbs in the ground. I am ready to relax and enjoy and turn my attention to fall garden cleanup. And then once that's done, it's holiday decorating time. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm sure this video was really, really long. So um, thanks for hanging in there. If you have any questions, comments, ideas, suggestions, um, whatever. Let's have a conversation in the comment section down below and go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet because we're doing a lot more gardening on this channel and some holiday decorating and you know we'll see what else the seasons bring us. Thank you so much for joining and I'll see you in another video real soon. Bye!